Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about the original UK Mono 1965 pressing of Rubber Soul versus the 2014 Mono Remaster of Rubber Soul that was trying to duplicate the original 65 on Mono. Now, I recently, um, about a week ago, I picked up this amazing UK um, pressing of Rubber Soul Mono, and I've been after this for a very, very long time, um, and I was able to get a pretty good deal on it because it's not in the best shape. So I should say right off the bat here that um, the condition of the record itself is at best good. And what I mean by that is that it plays all the way through. Uh, it doesn't. The, the needle does not jump at all. It plays all the way through, but it has a lot of surface noise, uh, and it does have a few scratches that cause some pops and some clicks to happen. But the integrity of the actual sound, the quality of the sound, the overall mix is still there to be heard, and it sounds really, really great. Um, that being said, this 2014 uh, remaster, of course, is in absolutely flawless condition. Uh, zero uh, to maybe like one to two percent surface noise and no pops no clicks at all but that being said I'm not comparing the conditions of these two albums I'm comparing the sonic attributes of the two albums now a lot of people including myself uh, praise these 2014 uh, mono remasters uh, the box set also I'm also including the 09 CD box set as well which was also done fantastic but I'm specifically talking about the 2014 mono um, vinyl uh, repressings. They are excellent. They sound so great. Um, and I encourage everyone, if you can pick them up, try to pick them up because they sound really, really good. But what I want to do in this video is compare the two and ask the question, uh, which one is better? Uh, and if you had all the money in the world and you could either buy um, the 2014 Mono Remaster or a really good condition original 65 Mono Master, um, which, one, which one would you buy just based on sound and which one sounds better? And of course, this is just my opinion, but I did a lot, a lot of research. I'm sure my wife um, is probably annoyed by all the amount of research I was doing, um, but I AB'd these um, over the last like four or five days and I've really got what I feel is a good grasp on the differences between these two. Now the differences are pretty minimal, I will say, which is a good thing, um, but there are some differences and there are a couple of key differences. Now first things first, let me show you what we're dealing with here as far as what the records look like. So here is the original 65 mono mix, and I should say right off the bat, this is not uh, the hot mix. So. Um, originally, the very first pressings of Rubber Soul, the mono uh, pressings, were um, a very, very hot, hot mix. And those are like hot stampers, they're called. And basically what happened was the person who cut the original um, mono master of Rubber Soul cut it way too loud. So it's super loud. And a couple of those um, pressings actually went out and people picked them up. And now, of course, they're major collector's items. But I have a friend who has one, so I've listened to it pretty extensively, um, and unfortunately, it doesn't sound that great. Now, it is very interesting to listen to because it's so unique, but it's at times gets very, very distorted in the uh, high end, uh, and it's just kind of it's just kind of a wild ride, is how I would describe it. Now, that being said, I would love to own one, uh, and if you own one, it's very, very cool that you have one because it's a pretty, pretty rare uh, Beatles pressing. But this is not um, a hot mix. And in fact, the stampers on this um, are, it's a uh, dash two, dash four. So here is what the record looks like. And like I said, this is not in great shape at all. But side one is better than side two. But it's on the original Parlophone label. And there is side two. And like I said, it has a very, very good amount of surface noise, uh, good in a bad way, of course, and it does have a few uh, pops and clicks, but it plays all the way through, um, and it really, really has a great, great sound. Now, let me show you the 
2014 Mono Remaster, and then, then we will get into the actual uh, sound differences between these two pressings. So, with the Mono pressing, the 2014 Mono, I almost dropped it, but I caught it. There's what that looks like. And there's the back. I should also mention that the back of this original 65 one, the original owner decided to add their own artwork to it, which I think is really, really funny and kind of kind of weird, but okay. Um, so with the 2014, though, remastered, you get this little um, pamphlet here, and I'm sure maybe some of you know about this, but uh, what it says on here is very, very important. So it says, Mastering Note. This album was cut from vinyl. This album was cut for vinyl from the original master tapes by using a completely analog signal path and with constant reference to the notes made by the cutting engineers for the first pressing of the LP. Now, that right there is already a little bit wrong because the first uh, pressing of Rubber Soul was the hot mix, and obviously they, this, that's not what they used to work on this 2014 remaster. But we'll go, we'll skip ahead to that. Uh, it has been made with the current technology uh, and without imposing the restrictions necessitated by the limitations of record players in the 1960s. Consequent, consequently, this version reveals more of the content on the, uh, of the audio on the master tapes. So that's what you get inside of the 14 uh, mono remaster. And here's what the record looks like. And this record is in perfect, perfect condition. Side one, side two. Now, let's get into the sound differences here. So, uh, let me put this back in the actual sleeve. So, as I was saying, I've, I was, I've A-B'd these two albums for the last four or five days. And the very first thing that you notice, or that I noticed upon listening to these, is that the original 65 mono mix is a little bit louder than the 14 mono remaster. Now, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? Depends on how you feel about it. I personally like that it's a little bit louder. Um, I think it it's just, it, it makes it feel like it's a little bit more electric to me, a little bit more lively, of course. But, I mean, there's a simple solution, just turn this one up a little bit and there's no problem. And when I say it's a little bit louder, it really is just a little bit louder. Um, so right off the bat, there's that difference. The other main, main difference here is that the original um, Mono 65 mix, to me, is overall just a better sound. And it's only just a tiny, tiny bit better. Now, here's where it's better for me. It seems to have a lot more of a, of a, a mid to high range clarity going on with the original mono mix, or the mono master, I should say. Um, there, there's a lot more high-end clarity that I'm hearing there than compared to the, to the 14 remaster. Um, and that's a really, really good thing when it comes to Rubber Soul, of course. And it just seems like in, um, certain instruments like the snare drum on Drive My Car um, really, really comes through a lot more on the original mono mix than on the remaster. Also, like cymbals come through a little bit more, um, and even the vocals, you can kind of get a little bit more of the vocal um, clarity a little bit more on this original mono, mono master. Now, when I say a little bit, I'm talking about um, just like a, a hair. These, really when it comes down to it, these are very, 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 very close. Now, that being said, uh, the, the bass on the original mono, um, it's a little bit different sounding as far as the, the tonality of it than the, the 14 uh, remaster. Now I will say, the 14 remaster has a little bit more bass for, from what I can hear. Um, now that's not really a good thing or a bad thing in this case because it's not like the original mono is lacking bass in any way. In fact, it's not at all. And I would actually argue to say that I enjoyed the bass a lot more on the original mono um, mono pressing here than on the actual 14 uh, remaster. That being said, the bass on the 14 remaster sounds excellent as well. It sounds pure analog, like they say as they cut it. 
It's got that analog bass sound that you just can't get uh, with the digital file. And it really is wonderful. They really, really did a great job on the bass uh, on this. Now, I think the main difference here as to why um, the, the bass on here is a little bit maybe more present, a little bit, has a little bit more umph, is because like they said in this pamphlet you get with the 14 remaster, is that they were able to um, use modern technology and they were not, they didn't have any restrictions like the original Monomix had as far as old school record players couldn't handle certain frequencies that obviously modern record players have no, no problem at all handling. So I think they really used that to their advantage when it came to the 14 remaster of Rubber Soul. Now, um, getting down to other aspects, like um, can, you hear, can you hear different instruments um, in a drastic way from one to the other? No, the mix is exactly the same. Uh, every little, little detail is literally exactly the same. You can hear the coughing on Norwegian wood on both of these pressings, and you can hear it just as good on either, either or. Uh, and really, like I said, everything is identical when it comes to the, act, the actual mix of the record. The fade outs, the intros, all that stuff. It's all exactly the same. But now we get down to the all important question of which one is better? Now, I will say that it was a really kind of a hard decision and my decision is based on sound alone. I'm not talking about the condition of the record whatsoever because obviously when it comes to condition, the 14 wins that hands down because this is dead quiet vinyl, no pops, no clicks. So as far as an overall listening experience, the 14 remaster wins that hands down all day long. It's beautiful to listen to, no problems, great. But as far as the overall um, sonic experience and just the pure analog magic of Rubber Soul, the mono uh, original 65 mono mix beats out the, the 14 remaster by just a little bit, just a hair. Uh, but it does beat it out. And it could, so now it comes down to this question of, if I had to pick one, which one would I pick? Well, obviously I would pick the 65 mono pressing just because it's the 65 mono pressing. It's the one that came out while the Beatles were still a band. It's the one that is as close to pure as the Beatles themselves wanted it to come out. So obviously this is the one that I would choose. That being said, if you are on, like me, a limited uh, budget as far as your record purchasing goes, if you wanted to find an original 65 mono pressing that was in just as good a shape as this 14 mono remaster, A, you probably would have to spend years and years trying to even find one, and B, if you did find one in as near as near condition as this, it would cost you upwards of a thousand to maybe even like $1,500 to $2,000 for a pressing like that. And obviously that's a lot, a lot of money. Um, finding a copy in very good condition will even run you upwards of like $400 to $500. So that's still pretty expensive. So that being said, the 2014 Mono Remaster, these are also getting harder and harder to find. They're also kind of going for a little bit more money than normal, but you can find these for like $100 to even like $200 on, you know, online. eBay, um, websites like that that are, are selling records, you can get them used. There's even some that are brand new. When it comes down to which would be the better investment, um, it just depends on your budget. If you have the money to spend to find a great, great copy of the uh, mono pressing here from 65, then of course you would buy this. But if you don't have unlimited uh, funds and you just want to get a great, great sounding um, pressing of the mono mix, then the 14 remaster is a great way to go. And, you know, I got to say, I'm happy that I have both of them because for a person like me who I love hearing any just minimal little difference in, in the pressings, then it's really, really fun for me to listen to both of these back to back. But for someone who just wants a solid pressing of the mono 
uh, mix, then I think the 14 remaster is the way to go. So I hope that gave you a little bit of insight into uh, these two pressings, the original um, 65 mono mix and the 2014 uh, mono remaster. And I do have to say before I end this video that they did an amazing job on these 14 remasters because the fact that I really couldn't find that much difference in these two pressings um, that were made, you know, over 40 years apart, that's pretty, pretty amazing that they were able to do that. And to make it sound, you know, nearly as good as the original is really, really fantastic job on the part of uh, EMI and, uh, and just Apple uh, Records in general, the Beatles in general. They did a great, great job. And yeah, I mean, you, couldn't, you can't go wrong with either of these records. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video talking about the uh, original 65 mono uh, pressing and the 2014 mono remaster. And uh, let me know if you want me to do any more of these type of videos in the future. I'm, by the way, I am on a current mission to try to get as many of the original mono um, pressings, uh, UK mono pressings of the Beatles albums as I possibly can. I already have um, Hard Day's Night, uh, Beatles for Sale, Help, and now I have uh, Rubber Soul. So my next ones I'm trying to get would be Sgt. Pepper, Revolver, um, and all the rest. So uh, I'm on the hunt for those, and uh, yeah, we'll see if I can pick them all up, because I, I think I can, and hopefully I can do it for not, you know, $5,000, somewhere under there. Anyway, that's it for now, and uh, hey, if you want to check out my website, go to needlemeetsvinyl.com, check out some records on there, and uh, we'll talk to you later, and bye for now.